Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes. For this flight I'm going from Amsterdam to Hamburg in a DC-8. And it is a payware DC-8 by Michael Wilson. And it looks the part, it's pretty well done. Uh, but I got it in a package, I probably wouldn't have got it on its own. I got it with a package with an L-1011 and also the 707. Uh, 707, 320 and 420 that were also by Michael Wilson. So it was a package of those and I think also a short Solon. So it was a bunch of planes. I think uh, it was on sale for like 30 bucks or something like that. So it was a good deal, I felt. A 707 you can't go wrong with. And I really wanted the, the L-1011. But the DC-8 is pretty good too. Uh, another classic. Whoa! Yeah, so that's one downside. Hold on. I mentioned this in a previous video, but no matter what I do with the volume controls, and I mean the actual volume controls, I could mute them. See, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn all of them off now. It doesn't control the volume of this plane. <laughs> it doesn't do anything for the volume of this plane. So I cannot control it. And it's loud. Huh? I'm gonna turn some stuff up again. But uh, yeah, so I don't know what to do about that. I'll probably have to turn these up for the next airliner. I can't really get closer than this to it. And so whenever I go to external view, initially it'll be really loud. This is it on idle. It's much louder when the throttle is up. It's nice and quiet in here though. <laughs> so I don't know what to do about that. I, I think I'll probably have to open up the aircraft file in the plane maker and see if I can fill around with some number there. I've never tried that before, but it might be necessary. So, but yeah, I, yeah, that was, that's weird. I mean, I'm sure the real thing was that loud, but um, it was famously loud. Uh, I don't want it to be that loud. So anyway, uh, let's get some flaps in. And then if I actually, ooh. I mean, uh, the the sad thing is it looks good with all the shiny texture and everything. And we've got KLM because we're going out of Amsterdam. I'll, I'll just... Okay, zooming out like that doesn't change the volume. Zooming out like this does. Okay, that that's good. There are two ways of zooming out. There's comma, and then there's the scroll wheel on the mouse. Comma reduces the volume. Scroll wheel does not. But if I change the view back into the cockpit mode right now, it will reset the camera, so... Alright, we'll go from here. We have been re listening to the Apollo 12 audio, and P. Conrad and Al Bean just completed their first EVA, and so they're sorting things out. They'll probably be going to sleep at some point. Of course, all that will be cut out. And anyway, let's listen to them. I've pressed play, and let's proceed with this. Right now. How, how you want me to go, Pam? Huh? Roger, copy. You're going off relay. Okay, why is it not going places? Come on. Okay, there we go. This is Apollo Control. It will probably be a few minutes before we have uh, communications back at the crew reconfigures their communications equipment from uh, the backpacks to the LAM system. Oh, that causes lag. <laughs> All the buildings. All the participants in the Apollo 11 crew news conference are on their way to the large auditorium at this time. The news conference should start short in the large auditorium.
Intrepid, Houston. Uh, help it out a little bit. This is Apollo Control at 119 hours 19 minutes. The flight surgeon reports that the BPU expenditure on Conrad uh, was 900 BPUs per hour. On Al B, 1,000 BPUs per hour. We do not have heart rates yet. Uh, we'll pass those along as soon as we get them. We will be taking this line down when the Apollo 11 crew news conference starts. We will take during that news conference and turn those tapes over to the transcript type of Yankee Clipper is scheduled to make a plane change to put it in the same plane as the lamb and liftoff time. Okay, it was still pretty loud. The thing is that changes the focal length on the background too. That plane change uh, coming at 119 hours, 47 minutes, 12 seconds will be service propulsion system out of plane to the north a delta Did a big old u-turn point seven feet per second uh, burn time of 18 seconds now this will move the uh, the ground track of the command module three and one half degrees north of the present ground track at the landing site. Three and a half degrees north at the landing site. Okay, uh, we're not gonna worry about it right now. Let's get out, of, well, we wanna get out all in here and we'll talk to you later. Amsterdam again. Roger, let's go to uh, connect the web com. Okay, audio commander, the PHFA off, B received. A is off, B is received. Code ICSPC relay off. A com, VHF, off, 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 on left side. Recorder off and uplink twelve dots. All done? Okay, to verify T ten O two. Yeah, okay. Connect O two supply to no MP first. Just a minute. ME is over here. How did it get undone? Did you undo it? O2. O2. Two. Two, two. What are you going to do? Oh, you don't want to connect it. You're going to have to turn around or this side to me, right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you got to turn all the way around that way. Atta boy. It might look a little bit better with this focal length, actually. How did it do? Depending on what you're looking for, of course. At the that looks pretty good. Not crisp, of course, but... I mean, on the terrain textures, it's not okay. crisp, but a little bit of blurriness is good sometimes. They're not, uh, wait a minute. They're still open and then close after two minutes. Vertical stabilizer on the DC-8 is really thin. Three mark. I feel like I'm not used to seeing them that thin. Probably don't need to go too high. Hamburg is... Not too far away. Hey, Alvin. That was a hell of a show. Too bad the TV didn't work. Too bad the TV didn't work, indeed.
Could you recycle that stop button? I'd feel a lot better. Yes. I can't see it from here, Al. I'll have to wait. Maybe yes. Although I think you tend to underestimate distances. Yeah, overall it's looking pretty good. Clouds are looking good. Very okay, you've still got sort of got like a painting minutes. kind of yeah. thing. Maybe I should try this focal length more often. Hey, I just that got a ball joint in it or something. Just think the TV wasn't working. Well, it's a pretty typical red line, 340, 350, around there. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Of you around the outset. I got good pictures of you. Pete, we're reading you on lock. You've got two minutes. Turn her off. Okay. Stop. I don't know. That's good. Five minutes away from acquisition of uh, windmills or wind Marshall, turbines. Yankee Clipper. This is Apollo Control at 119 hours 30 minutes. We will take the line down now for the news conference. Okay, well, you should level off around here ish. This is Apollo Control at 120. We did not capture the news conference. That lunar plane change. It was about Apollo 11 anyway. The was performed successfully. We do not have the actual uh, Delta V achieved yet. Uh, we'll get that from the flight dynamics officer shortly. However, the burn was on time, and it was an 18-second burn as programmed was out of plane to the north and was expected to change the uh, ground track three and a half degrees to the north at the landing site. We'll join the air to ground again live now. Thing sounds like a rocket here.
Lots of farmland around here. This is Apollo Control at 120 hours 11 minutes. We now have from uh, Dr. John Jigglesmith the heart rate string EVA. Pete, our uh, intent on that comment about the Calisto 2 hoses is to be assured that those hoses are straight and that you do get all the water uh, running out of them. There's no low places in the hoses which the water can lie. Okay, drain the hose. That's the idea, okay? At the firm. The average heart rate for Pete Conrad throughout the EVA period was 105. His high was 150. His low was slightly less than 80. Sounds like he was the excited. <laughs> 121, his high 151, his low 82. Sounds like on average he was ex very excited too. Yankee Clipper. Yankee Clipper, Houston. On the high gain, manual. Well, the video might not be encoding right because OBS is telling me that encoding's overloaded. We'll see. Something very intense is going on here. Let's see, in the cockpit. I mean, the cockpit looks pretty good. Would not mind hanging out in the cockpit more. I'll try and mute the audio before going outside until I reset the camera just for safety's sake it's mostly cropland outside anyway don't know about those numbers and why they're like that that's weird Otherwise, not bad. Thank you, sir. Houston, we're going to modulate PM. You can see some of the barrier islands on the north end of, Nether of the Netherlands. We're approaching a city called Groningen. There aren't any interesting accent marks on that, so that's the best I can do for pronunciation. Oh, oh a little bit of stickiness there. Okay, I'm going to temporarily mute the audio so that your ears will not get destroyed. Affirmative, Dick. Uh, go Omni Bravo, present time. Okay, there you go. Let's see if we can see this Groningen. Uh, Far ahead, or did we just? I think it's this city right here.
So okay. this is Groningen. Clipper, Roger. Copy, uh, master alarm. Going too high and fast to see any detailed buildings or anything like that. Beyond that waterway ahead, we're back over Germany. Well, we've run out of clouds. Interested in the nose right now. After they complete that, we will have uh, a short debriefing session between the ground and Intrepid on the this first EVA. Uh, Mission Control Center flight controller teams uh, will change shifts right after that briefing. The nose has two scoops on it for some reason. I don't know. Conference. Don't know why. Central Standard Time. Some clouds baked into the landscape. And what's that city? That looks like an interesting place. For the last 35 minutes. Winshoten. Go ahead. We're waiting. I'm going to take this. 35 cent scale that they sent out here to weigh these bags with and break it over somebody's head. <laughs> He's pissed at the scale. I take it you're having a malfunction with the bag. The bag and the scale. This is Emden. No, just the scale. The nut came off the top of the adjustment and that's the end of the scale. Again, we're over Germany now. Pete, we're uh, busy activating the scale experts. Activating the scale experts. Hey, tell me where they stowed the flyers in here. Stand by, Pete. Uh, and try to turn towards Oldenburg. Pete, our first cut on the flyer location is in one of the PPKs. Roger. Pete, it's in the uh, lower lunar boot compartment. Yankee Clipper, Houston. Intrepid, 
Hmm. Interesting angle we've got. Hey, Al, uh, how are you coming that way in the water? Our suggestion is that you, uh, if you don't see uh, that you're going to be able to do it for a short period of time, that you will move on. Uh, suggestion is that you look for something where you can uh, accurately measure its volume, and uh, we'll calibrate it when we come back. And the last alternative is just plain guess at the volume. How's the wind up here? Ah, oh, hundred and seven knots it looks like. And it's directly to the side, so that's why it seems like we're going slightly sideways. Going like... We seem to be skidding sideways. Well, it's because we got a hundred knot wind pushing us to the side, so... Whoa, lots of lag suddenly. Um, that's not good. Right now, we're not. We're going a bit fast. Okay. Copy 3.8 kilograms. Well, if that's what KT stands for at the top of the scale. They're actually measuring something in kilograms? Unbelievable. Roger, uh, we copy uh, point three eight. You had us wondering down here. Yeah, that yeah, sounded a lot. The metric fellows were wondering. B2. But they say, I think he said 9.8, which um, that would be like 9.8 liters, so that would not be right. That would be a lot of water to have accumulated. Roger, Al, is that the CDRs? That's right. I like how they said the metric guys. <laughs> oh god, we've got clouds. Let's... Intrepid, for your information, uh, your EVA went uh, four hours and one Still minute. Down. Just as we were and, gonna pass uh, Oldenburg. Al, how can there the just be such a solid cloud? What the heck? Plus H2O was uh, down to 47 minutes remaining. And Pete, your O2 well, we'll was try and descend. Uh, most critical on you. And you had uh, still two hours and seven minutes. We're not minutes all that far from Hamburg anyway. Okay, what? Hey, Houston, uh, while we're doing this, uh, what was our BTU output level, do you figure? We do have some air brakes. They're not very big air brakes. But there they are. Oh, finally, level, okay. I think we were working at. Pete, you averaged out at 900 BTU, and Al, you averaged out at 1,000. Can we see Oldenburg? Well, there's definitely clouds behind us. Um. Oh, well, um. What kind of signals you get from the ALSAP? Is that running I think this might right? be part of it. That's affirmative. It's running real well. The PSC and the LSM are up and working. And they're uh, just going through the activation phases for the remainder. I don't see any other big city right here. Okay. And we are approaching Bremen. And that's that port city right there. Point one seven. Got it. Yeah, 
Yeah, Bremen is pretty big. And uh, Houston, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pop off our pluses. And uh, while we're doing that, uh, I guess we ought to get into uh, our EVA debriefing with you. Roger, we're standing by for that. The river is the Wesser River. Interrupted Houston, we also have your liftoff block data for Rev 20 through 24. No, oh, I bet it's still trying to. Yeah, it's loading some of the unique buildings even from this altitude. Go ahead, Houston. Bremen is pretty spread out along the river. Okay, Intrepid, lift off, block data, Rev 20 to 24. 20 T8. 122. One oh, I'll just two. turn towards Hamburg now. Which is a little bit further to the north. One two four, one seven, five four, twenty two T ten, one two six, one six one three, twenty three T eleven, one two eight, one four three four, twenty four T twelve, one three zero, one two five nine. Roger, copy, one, two, two, one, nine, three, two, one, two, four, one, seven, five, four, one, two, six, one, six, one, three, one, two, eight, one, four, three, four. Uh, one, three, zero, I saw the one, smoke two, effect one, five, seem to... That's correct, Al. ...make the wing look weird a bit. Technically, this model hasn't been updated since they updated the... ...smoke effects in X-Plane. We did that in uh, a question right now. Re uh, relatively recent to, upgrade. Uh, it out. We got uh, mechanical and uh, and Viticon burn people uh, taking sides. We're not sure right now. If you got a lot of rope. We'll bring it back for you. That is a possibility, Intrepid. Do you have any questions you want to ask us about the EVA? That's affirmative. Uh, we'd like to get your comments first, if we could, and then we'll uh, take up the questions and uh, recommendations that we can come up with. This is interesting. I want to hear okay, what they have to say. My comment is, is I got water in both my boots, and it's rather than buggy. Roger. Copy uh, water in the boots. <laughs> of course it'd start with something like that. My second comment is, is the EBA went pr pretty well as planned. Uh, uh, I think that uh, most everything, once we got to a task, the way we had practiced it back there, we got it done. Uh, it was kind of the unforeseen, as usual, which almost got us behind. I, I will say one thing, it very definitely took about 10 minutes or so to adapt to what was going on, but as soon as I did, I really got to hustling, and I think Al felt the same way. I think I'll stay in the cockpit. from our and end down here, uh, Pete and Al, you did a tremendous job. And we'll... Able to uh, go along, as you said, on the nominal things and take care of the off-nominal also. There's quite a few points there where it, uh, we might not have met the objective had you uh, not played plate head, heads up ball. Yeah, that's the handy of having a hammer aboard. <laughs> yeah, my heart was in my throat when he could pull that cask out of there. I mean, the element out of the cask. Yeah, uh, we'll yeah, pass should have been a surgeon. by Hamburg uh, on the next flight with the Airbus A310, I think. I mean, we'll see it here. Well, but. That was me that was beat with the hammer, not out. As far as the geology goes, I, I, we really didn't have a chance to look too hard, but I think it's very obvious that there are uh, 
a variety of different kinds of rocks. Uh, I would also like to say that I think that we're in a most favorable position to get to the surveyor. I don't think we want to walk down the crater wall from uh, from the crater wall side that the surveyor's on. I think what we want to do is walk down in the crater right from the lab across the bottom and walk up the surveyor. It looks far too steep. Uh, to approach from the other side, near the upper part. Uh, that's number one. Number two, uh, I think that uh, we're pretty well game for any kind of a traverse that you want us to make. Uh, you know uh, what we could do here in a few minutes is sit down with our book and put together the best of, of uh, spot three and four. Uh, and uh, y'all could do the same thing. Okay, Pete. Uh, we're leaning right now towards uh, That's the our traverse airport. for Site 4, although uh, we wouldn't take it necessarily in the same order it's spelled out there. Uh, if you want, uh, you could get out your... Uh, notes on board for site four and we could give you a, a tentative spell out of the order in which you would hit those points and in looking at it uh, I see it would take you down the western wall of the surveyor crater which is uh, I believe the way you want to go yeah let me find uh, number four here just a second I'll be right with you That that would uh, that would work out yeah, pretty darn uh, clever, actually, uh, to uh, start at uh, F. There's a tan it's patch in the middle of the river. Where it looks we landed like. there. Don't know if it should be like that. Roger, that's affirmative. We show uh, our present uh, thoughts on where you landed are R2, 15.0, and if you like. Um, I'll go ahead and give you the order in which you could hit those points that are spelled out, uh, A through G. Now wait a minute, I'm going to improve your, your, your knowledge of where we are. Uh, it just came to me what crater I'm looking into here. Uh, I am sitting approximately 120 feet uh, North east from the number three crater, that's three in age, uh, that is on the east side of the, the head crater, which would be Q. We're, no, as a matter of fact, we're right on about uh, Q5 and about 14.1. That tan texture is often Roger, Pete, we copy that. indicative of uh, missing textures, so we'll have to see. I'll try and see room, from we'll inside the cockpit. We'll get back to you on it. That puts you pretty close. It only seems to be the waterway, though. Okay, now give me some words about the water in my boots. I'm not kidding. I got water in my boots, and I want to know what to do about it now. I, I didn't get any water out of my drain hoses. And I just, I'm just beginning to pick up water in my left boot. I had it in my right boot for a while. Okay, stand by, Pete. We'll be right with you. Okay, I think the first thing I got to do is disconnect the suit hoses. Okay. We're uh, thinking about that, Pete, and why don't we go on with this debriefing, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can come up with a good recommendation. On Apollo 11, they mostly did the debriefing on the way back to Earth after they did uh, 
Earth orbit return, uh, Earth uh, return burn. Pete, can we go ahead with the uh, debriefing? What I'd like to do is to give you the but because recommended order for the points in Traverse 4. But because they have another EVA, they have to do it now. Okay, just a second. I disconnected my hoses, and this blue hose is really pumping out pretty moist air. And I'm just going to let it pump it out. The air is ice cold air. And I well, think there's textures the on that. There's some way that we can. Whatever is going on in the river. There's textures. Hmm. Stand by with that, Pete. I don't know if it's supposed to look like that. Oh, well, we're going too far to the left on that. That's the runway right there. I don't know if I can land it. Pete, <laughs> you give us the, uh, uh, we're a bit high. Position of the suit temperature control valve and also confirm that the LCG pump circuit breaker is pulled. I've kept the air brakes out. Uh, I guess we got a little bit more air brakes. Okay, suit temp is full cold. I guess we'll go to full hot on that. Affirmative. And the LCG pump brake and the LCG pump breaker is out. Roger. Well, down the way we've okay, got go some more of Hamburg. Roger. Okay, number one would be F. And that's head crater. Number two, B. Yeah, we're, we're too high. Number three, A, sharp crater. I'll, I'll do a might loop. Possibly delete this depending upon how you're right doing here. on the timeline at that point. Not your normal number aircraft four, practice, C, but Halo crater. Number five, D, surveyor crater. Six is E, block crater, and we'll omit G. All right, we'll risk a look outside. Since I basically idled the engine. Uh, it's just loud no matter what. And we may just cut across that corner there depending upon how you're doing the timeline. Yeah, but don't we also get out here on this possible Copernican Ray? We, uh, we do want to get off the, after that Copernican Ray material. Uh, two points. One is it further out than uh, you might be able to hack in a normal traverse for the documented samples. And two, we're not too sure exactly where that line really lies. Uh, if you can, go on over to get that into that area without uh, taking a lot of time away from the other documented sampling, uh, press on. Okay, now in looking at the map, uh, we got all the way over to, uh, if you go to, what is it, the general map, map 5? Whatever you want to call it. You get over there in that shelf crater. That's where you sent it. And uh, we got to that fella. So some of that stuff we picked up uh, might be of uh, that Copernican Ray material. Uh, we also have photographs down there of that shelf, if anybody thought it was interesting. I uh, took a uh, set of stereos in that thing all the way around that big crater. Now, we made it over there with no strain. Matter of fact, we ran over and ran back and nothing flat. So, uh, I think it's reasonable uh, to go as you have indicated. We could be one starting it after the right kind of spacecraft. They're going to Sharp. Uh, they're going to Bench. Then to Halo, then to the Surveyor Crater, then to Block, and back to the spacecraft. 
How's that sound? Roger, Pete, that sounds real good. Uh, understand you'd like to go sharp and then bench. Well, yeah, we could, uh, we could uh, try that. Roger, no problem. Okay, Pete, if you would um, take a look at the information you have there on those sites, and we'll be getting back to you in the pre-EVA briefing and talk a little bit more about the location of the sampling, the core tubes and the trench site sampling. Okay. You may have some pretty good ideas on that now after uh, being able to look at it firsthand. And Pete, we have several questions for you uh, related to the EVA. We'd like to move through these pretty quickly as uh, we know we ought to get you off to bed pretty quickly. Okay. First, a question on the water Go in the ahead. boots. Uh, when was the first time you got water in the boots, Pete? And uh, Al, do you have any in at the present time? Okay, that uh, looks good. Now, See the runway. Any, I noticed that uh, just starting before I just got off the suit loop to, to prep for ABA, I noticed that when I came, started in my right boot when I came back in. Yes, that's and, central uh, Hamburg. Uh, these hoses. Uh, How much can we tune uh, it up? Blue hose, of course. Without killing this whole uh, deal. Uh, that up. looks better. Pumped out about uh, uh, three or four. Uh, frame rate's rough, but. That Great looks corner, much more corner, like a city to me. I didn't like the barrenness of it. Roger, All right, you, we'll Pete. deal. A uh, question for you, Al. There, in the EVA prep, the PLISCOM check took longer than nominal. Uh, what correction acting? What corrective action did you take? And uh, do you think we may have a problem the second time around? Uh, not at all. It was completely by error. Uh, at the front of the RCU, there's a switch. It goes main, off, it pushed it off or something like that. The momentary it is. And we should have had it at main, and we didn't. And so we were uh, a little confused there for a while. It Roger. was uh, entirely an onboard problem. Next question for you, Houston. How long was our total EVA prep time? Uh, stand by on that one. Oh, we got a stadium there. EVA prep time was two hours and eight minutes. Okay, uh, I believe we'll do it in about uh, what plus 45 tomorrow as planned. Uh, it's like Al said, one, we made a couple of mistakes, and, uh, and the other one, uh, uh, we were just had our heads up and locked. Something we didn't have on a checklist, and we should have known better. Pete, uh, sec or Al, a second question. When you put the uh, core tubes in, uh, do you now think it's feasible to join two core tubes together and perhaps get uh, at least uh, oh, one and a half it's got a lot of lift. lengths in? Something on that order? Yeah, it was getting harder as I uh, drove it in. Just on, uh, just like it does uh, oh, back on better. Earth. But uh, I think if you wanted to stand there and count, uh, maybe three times as long as you would have to to drive in uh, one, you could do it. And I don't know if we could do that now, though, with those pins in. But maybe we can take those pins out and put two up together. I should be willing to give it a try if you'd want to do it. Okay, we'll be thinking about that one and uh, get back to you with it. Apparently the augering is what made the difference there. If you're looking at your map, uh... Dad, if you've got a pound that... Go ahead. Uh, don't comment there.
Roger, stand by on that deck. Happy lights think I am too low, but... Okay, Houston, if you're watching the computer, I'm going to bring it out of standby and put it back in again to update the clock. It wants to go up quite a lot now. There, yeah, there we go. Roger, Intrepid. Okay. Yankee Clipper Houston, we're ready for the E mod. Okay, I think we can turn this taxiway. Okay, hold on, hold on. All right, let me pause the audio. Roger, Intrepid, copy 36.1 volts. And uh, would you say which one would apply to? Okay. I'm going to zoom out like heck. Alright, and I'll continue taxiing from here. But we have arrived in Hamburg. And next time we will be aiming for Oslo. But last time I tried to go from Oslo to, uh, from Hamburg to Oslo, there was some sort of uh, scenery issue along the way that forced me to land at Copenhagen instead so we'll see how that shapes up so anyway with this I'll say thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time